Worried about homeschooling high school? Join me and my special guest today as we answer the most commonly asked questions about homeschooling those teen years. Hello, and welcome to the Homeschooling and Loving It podcast. I'm your host, Jamie, your friend at homeschool.com and homeschool mom of six. Join us as we keep it real and chat about the ups and downs of this amazing adventure we call the homeschool life. So grab a cup of your warm favorite and a comfy chair and let's get started. Hi everyone, this is episode 26 and today I've got Joy Caps joining us. Joy is here from Let's Homeschool High School. If you haven't had a chance to visit Let's Homeschool High School.com, you need to. It's one of the web's most comprehensive resources on homeschooling high school with e-courses, e-books, video how-tos, and even a series of printables that will cover all your record keeping needs. I've used Let's Homeschool High School through the years as I've homeschooled my own kids. And I have to say, it does compare to some of these websites that are out there charging an arm and a leg for you to use their resources. And so one of the most unique things about Let's Homeschool High School.com is the fact that it is free. It is absolutely free and there is so much stuff there that will help you get through high school and enjoy it. Help me welcome Joy today. Joy, I'm so glad you could join us. Before we get into our subject matter today, which is obviously going to be about high school, Joy, can you take a second to tell our listeners just a little bit about yourself? Sure. Hi, Jamie. Thanks for having me. My family lives in Western North Carolina, and we have homeschooled from kindergarten all the way to the end. Homeschooling wasn't originally on our master plan, so I would definitely consider ourselves accidental homeschoolers. Our oldest son has special needs, and he started out in public school, you know, so he could get all of his therapies, like speech therapy, occupational therapy, all in one place. And for the most part, with the help of a really good preschool teacher who could take on his challenges, he did well. But halfway through kindergarten, it became painfully obvious that we would have to try a different route for schooling. Our daughter, who is less than two years younger than her brother, joined our homeschool that fall. It's been a wonderful experience, even with a few twists and turns along the way. And I've met your daughter. She is she is very, very sweet girl. I'm really excited, though, to dive into this topic about homeschooling. It feels like so many homeschoolers struggle in this area, and probably more because they're apprehensive about actually getting into homeschooling high school. I've really found, as you've joined me before at some of these homeschool conventions, that when we talk to homeschool parents there, this is one of their big concerns, don't you think? I agree, yeah. There's a real need for it. And I think just a way for us as moms who've been there and done that to kind of look back at them and say, hey, if we can do it, you can do it, right? (laughs) Right. So there's a lot of questions we can discuss. Well, I've tried to choose some of the most frequently asked questions. And we're going to kind of hit those throughout this episode. There is one that stands out. As we go through today's episode, we kind of play this fun game with our guests every once in a while, but I want you guys to take a guess at which one you think is the most frequently asked question. And then at the end of the podcast, I'll share with you guys which one that is. The first one that we're going to tackle today, question number one, how do I know what to do or even where to start homeschooling high school? And so, Joy, as our guest, will you start with this one? Sure, that's a good question. Um, if you go to the Let's Homeschool High School.com website, there's a great free ebook download that is perfect for getting started. But to answer from my own experience, you just jump right in. If your student has previously been attending school, it's a good idea to initially de school. And de schooling is the adjustment period a child goes through when leaving school and beginning homeschooling. It's a way that, you know, your kids can kind of start from scratch. It's also a very good idea to check your state laws. What are the specific requirements for each of the states? Once you find this out, set those in place in your homeschool. And then determine how your student learns and what type of curriculum they'll do best with. 
keep in mind that this might take some tweaking, especially with special needs. You might have to, on occasion, change things up a bit. Definitely. I have to agree with that. As long as you can stay flexible and just be willing to change things to meet your teens ever changing needs. <laughs> you kind of <laughs> It does, doesn't it? But when I started uh, each of my kids on their high school journey, I tried to encourage them to think about their future. And I know it's so hard. I mean, you've got an eighth grader. That's like what, 14 going into yeah. ninth grade and they're not thinking about their future. <laughs> they're just no. like, what are we doing fun this weekend? What's going on? So I just tried to challenge them to find something that they really enjoyed or something that they think they might want to be when they grow up. Just think about it, you know, so not anything heavy duty. I don't want to push them into anything or, you know, make them be something that I want them to be, but just kind of get them thinking in that direction. But then sometimes uh, one of my kids, uh, my oldest, which is kind of typical for oldest child, she knew what she wanted and she was ready to go with it. So, you know, everyone is different. And I think that's the, yeah. that's the tricky part, isn't it? About homeschooling. It really is. Just encourage them. And then if you have one that, that knows exactly what they want to do, then just channel that and, you know, find ways you can provide a solution for them to accomplish oh. that. I think that's just half the battle right there. That is. Yeah. So question number two. I can't teach those difficult high school courses. How in the world will my teen learn them? I'll go ahead and take this one first and then I'll send it over to you. This was one of my big concerns. Of course, I do have a teaching background, was a teacher, but I was an elementary school teacher. And so I was kind of concerned about physics and chemistry and even foreign language. One of the first things that I did when I started homeschooling high school was to find some other ways to do things. <laughs> right. I just, I wanted to guide them. So I, you know, there are, there are homeschool resources out there and really every day new ones are coming on the scene. There's so many and so many things to choose from that, you know, I would just choose good, solid homeschool curriculum to help me do it. How did you do it, Joy? I know you, you probably... It was a big one for me because you know there's a couple areas that really weren't my strengths and I'd suggest to outsource it you know there's co-op classes tutors and you know, like you said online curriculum and classes and my two kids do, did um, co-op classes for a couple of years and the moms that taught each class were very knowledgeable in each areas that they taught about and that helped and yeah. well, locally, we have even have a homeschool dad who once a week teaches a variety of classes to a group of homeschool students. Online courses are great because a course is taught by someone else. And sometimes some with some subjects, you really need that, you know, right. let's yeah, let's homeschool. High school has an entire directory that's dedicated to online high school resources. That's on our homepage. Yes, I've used that before because there are so many. You just click on it and then there's just like a listing and it lists out to like the individual resources and then you can find right. out more about them and even visit their website. So yeah, that's super helpful. Another thing I wanted to mention here was something that I didn't start out doing with my oldest um, and even my second oldest. She's kind of mad at me about that, but <laughs> I digress. <laughs> um, but it's dual enrollment. And so I started with my twins, which ended up being right in the middle of my six kiddos. I was absolutely blown away with how wonderful of an experience we had with it. It really is. <laughs> it, it just yeah. shocked me. And in our state, and I know every state is just a little bit different in all these little niches and areas, but our state of Georgia, it is absolutely free. I mean, wow. absolutely free. So I walked, I, we went in there and we registered her at a, a college that's about 40 minutes away. I was expecting to pay for something, you know, books or something, nothing. The books were paid wow. for, registration fees. I mean, I walked out of there kind of blown away, but, and then the other cool thing about it was we were able to choose online courses for her to take. So really the actual demographics of our homeschool didn't change. She was taking college classes, but yeah. still at home. So uh, that's handy. <laughs> oh, it's good because I know a lot of parents really get concerned about their 
you know, 16 year old sitting in a college class full of 20s and 30 year old people. Yeah. So I can get a little hairy there, but taking them at home really worked great for us. So let's move on to question number three. Will I be able to adequately prepare my student for college? (laughs) That's a good one because I know that's like running through everybody's mind when they're attempting to homeschool high school. So Joy, what do you think about that one? If your students have some idea what they're, you know, where they'd like to go to college, it's a good idea to seek out the admission requirements to the college and tailor their high school to meet those requirements. Yeah, definitely. It's like I tried to explain it to one of my kids one time. I said, basically, we're just checking to see what they want from you. And then we're going to work backwards. Exactly. (laughs) Getting those requirements from the college. I mean, that's huge. And again, that kind of requires the teenager to think about what college they want to go to. It's good to, you know, all of these events and these needful things as you're going through high school prompt our students to begin making those tough decisions that they're going to be faced with. So yeah, part of the process, huh? Yeah. But one thing that I found, and I know I just kind of went on a rant a little while ago about dual enrollment, but I did really feel like those dual enrollment courses that my daughter was taking, even though they were online, they were really preparing her for what college life was going to be all about. Right. Because they were definitely challenging, way more challenging than any course she had taken up to that point. It was like, (laughs) here's the book, here's a little bit of instruction. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah, so definitely a different level of learning and expectation at the college level. You know, of course, I'm kind of doing it now with my youngest two. I'm sort of getting them in that routine. I've got one in ninth grade right now. I'm trying to prepare, set her up to be ready for 11th grade and take in a couple dual enrollment. So I'm sort of building up the course difficulty level, I guess. Oh, that's a good idea. (laughs) Yeah, hoping that it doesn't just blow her away when she actually does. Definitely, preparing them is important. It's something that you ju- you need to actively do. We do, as parents, need to be working on preparing them for the whole college scene in a lot of different ways, not just academically, right? Right, right exactly. So question number four, college isn't everything. How can I help my teen find and prepare for an alternative path to their career choice? My boy is one of the twins and they're like right in the middle there so they're the middle child but he was definitely not interested in full-on college university since my son was very little he always had a strong interest in cars and truck motors and how things work and how it gets put together and so i wanted to feed that interest i could see that that brought him joy and made him very happy and that oh hey this may be what would serve him well in the future and so i encouraged him in that and that led to an apprenticeship with this man in our church and so he's been he's 18 now and he's been working for four years in this man's auto body shop oh that's awesome yeah so he loves it now he is going to technical college right now what are your thoughts on this question joy well it's a good idea to talk to your students like you said and find out what their dreams are for the future you know, there's so much beyond college out there. Entrepreneurship is a possibility, too, for some of your creative students, you know, or like you said, technical college. Some might even want to write a book. Yeah, and there's just so many ways you can go about that. I don't know anybody personally, but a friend of mine, also homeschooling friend, <laughs> um, has very close friends that started a candle making and soap making business. Oh, fun. Yeah, and they're homeschool children and and make nice little profit. Lots of fun ways that you can take care of their future and encourage them in in a path that they'll be able to work at. So just helping them find something that really fits them. And, you know, that's what I tell my kids. If you can find something that you really love to do and you can make money at it, 
then you're going to find joy in going to work every day for the rest of your oh, life. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Go to the next question. It's but new. what about college admissions? Will my homeschool team be frowned upon? No, not at all. Colleges are looking for homeschoolers, you know, because of how well they perform in general, you know, in a variety of subjects. Mm-hmm. When I went to scholarship day with my daughter at a local college, I was happy, happily surprised how excited teachers are to hear your student has been homeschooled. You know, they're excited to get, you know, your student in the classroom. That's something we hear a lot about with homeschool.com. And I found that just across the board. They're like really excited about it. Like, oh, yeah. Um, I think part of that is that homeschoolers are good, independent learners. Yeah, they definitely are. They're yeah. motivated to learn. My oldest two, especially with the first one, you know, you've never done this before. You've worked hard for four years to kind of get them ready to prepare them for this day when they would move on to that next level. And so we went for like, they called it an open house, but it, you know, they were doing a whole bunch of different things that night. And so we went, just my daughter and I, we had all her, like the tran- her homeschool transcript and, you know, all those things I'd been working so hard and was so nervous about. And we sat down with them and they looked over her stuff and they were just like, oh, oh, of course. Let's go ahead and get her registered tonight. It was crazy. (laughs) It was crazy. Of course, we had to like send in some other paperwork and other documents later. It wasn't like all a done deal that night. But for the most part, we left there kind of, I guess you could say stunned. Yeah. (laughs) We're so surprised that it had gone so smoothly. And what I was literally sweating bullets about from years (laughs) was like over in an instant. It just goes to show you that sometimes we really worry about things that we don't need to be worried about. Yes, we really do. (laughs) There's a homeschool mom stress that we feel like we carry the whole weight of it all on our shoulders. Oh, I know. (laughs) Homeschooling high school is just a process. And then at the end, we might be pleasantly surprised at what's happened, right? (laughs) Right. So question number six, what about scholarships? Will my homeschool teen be able to get a scholarship? What you need to do is fill out the free application for federal student aid as soon as possible. I think it starts on October 1st. You know, that's the year before your student will be attending college. And your teen will automatically be considered for the federal and state scholarships available. Oh, and also, don't forget about the SAT and ACT. These tests will also automatically get you in the running for merit-based scholarships. One thing to consider, though, is that if your student doesn't measure up to their potential on those tests, that some colleges will completely bypass these scores and have the students write essays in addition to looking at their, you know, their application and transcripts. I've had a couple of my kids that just did not test well with the SAT and ACT. So that's That's definitely, (laughs) they just sort of melt down going to the public school and taking those tests. So they've had to take the AccuPlacer at one college. They took that. And then uh, another time they had to write an essay. So, and it's great to know that there are alternatives out there. That's one thing I've found as well is that free application for federal student aid, let's just call it the FAFSA, that's easier. We filled that out and I have to admit, I've that's been a huge learning process too. I'm on the. Oh, I know it. <laughs> it was kind of a yeah, mess. It took me all day. <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't it? But in the long run, I have to say that with each of my kids, and granted, they're not all like rocket scientist children. They're just your normal kids. Each of them, they've gotten a federal grant from it, which you don't have to pay back. Right. Definitely. I know when we've been at conventions, we've been asked this question and a lot of people think that the FAFSA (laughs) is just for people who are financially struggling. That's not the case. Everybody needs to fill it out. Oh, yeah. These are federally funded programs that we've put money into. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Another thing I did want to mention is that as my kids have gone through college, they've met some of their friends kind of treat this whole college scholarship thing like a job and they will apply for <laughs> scholarship after scholarship yeah. 
And they do, they end up getting several every semester, which works out great and obviously helps pay for college. That's a great way. All right, so the next question, what is a credit and how do I give credits and how many do they need to graduate? Okay, so this one I laugh because personally didn't realize all of what went into this whole credit thing when I got started <laughs> homeschooling yeah. high school. And after I studied it and understood what it meant, it is pretty straightforward. We just don't always get all those facts before we have to actually get involved in homeschooling high school. I think it's a pretty universal understanding that a one credit or one high school credit is equal to 120 to 180 hours of work. And so that, that kind of translates to like an hour a day course. And right. then, so then with that, with that band, that 120 to 180, it's a good rule of thumb to understand like lower end would be your electives. And then the higher 180 hours would be your core courses, difficult courses like chemistry and biology, that type of thing. Right. And then another easy way to assign credits too is that if you've purchased a ready-made homeschool curriculum and it's say for example it's a biology curriculum the idea is is that if your student finishes that curriculum then they get one credit hour it's just a couple rules of thumb there and then the half credit thing kind of goes the same way so, and if yeah. it's still confusing you know let's homeschool high school has a great chart that can get be printed off you know and have on hand that simplifies what each credit's worth i think i've seen you know, that you know another question that comes up is how many credits does my team need need to graduate you know most states don't have credit requirements for homeschool graduates but it's a good rule of thumb to have the credits that may be required for the admission into you know whatever tech school or community college or wherever they're wanting you know to go if they want to continue their education right yeah that's a good point and that goes hand in hand with what we were talking about earlier where you find out what's required from where you want to go and work backward yeah question number seven what about transcripts well, transcripts are simply a record of your teen's accomplishments in high school. And, you know, it's it's a great way to let them shine. It, you show what they've done and create a transcript that is as unique as your student. Let's Homeschool High School has a few transcript templates that are professionally designed and free for you to download. I have to testify, I have used those transcript templates. I have too. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so easy and it helps you think through that process. So if you're just filling out the forum, it's got sections for obviously their grades and courses and their testing, sections that ask about volunteer work. Oh yeah, that's very important too. <laughs> I appreciate that and the fact that it was free. I also like that it had a section on there about extracurricular things like music or even athletic things they were interested in. So Yeah, and colleges want to see that. Yeah, they do. And that's part of that make the transcript as unique as your student. Yeah. And we can So make it a good one. <laughs> exactly. So next question. Question number eight. How does my teen get a diploma? This one's kind of interesting. A lot of people are really afraid of this and are worried about this one big time. One thing that calmed my fears, and in our state's eyes, we are considered the teacher of record. And so our grade books and the transcripts that we make are considered a legal document, just like they are when they're created by the teacher in the public school. And so being the teacher of record, when your student completes what you feel is their requirements for graduation, what you've set as those goals, when they complete that, then you can award them their diploma. Let's Homeschool High School has, a play, uh, has several different diploma options for free. You could download them and then take them to the printer and get a high quality copy of your diploma. You know, you could have a ceremony, you could do it however you want. I, you know, I've graduated four now. And so each one, wow. of, yeah, each one of them was like, they wanted something different. You know, one of them did want to wear a cap and gown. Then another one didn't want to have anything to do with that. <laughs> they just wanted to have the party. Yeah. And with each of them, I just, I did just that. But I just created one of my own and just, I didn't even take it to a printer. I just printed it on my printer and signed it. And there we went. So in all reality... I don't think any of my children have actually used that diploma right. for anything. It's really the transcripts that 
speak to, you know, job or even college. So question number nine, how will my teen socialize? This one's always been a funny one for me, you know, my, my children are more social than I am, you know, and, you know, most homeschool teens are so busy with volunteering or playing sports, working, youth group, you know, that they don't even think about it as socialization, you know, they're just doing what they want to do. I, I feel that homeschool teens are more socialized because they actually interact with people of all ages, not simply a classroom of peers. So many times I, I still get the question from people who don't really know us. Until they start talking to both of my children and yes. they can see it. <laughs> just like you said, our house has been exactly the same. We're just all the time going. Kids are involved in a rec league right here in our little bitty tiny yeah. Georgia town and uh, all their friends at church. So yeah, they're busy. They're Yeah, that's how we are too. <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and wrap it up. We've covered a lot of stuff today. Do you have any final thoughts that you want to share with our listeners, Joy? Well, I'd say to really enjoy the last years at home with your kids because, you know, before you know it, they'll be spreading their wings and flying, which is what we want them to do. I know that teen years aren't always easy. Make lots of happy memories to keep them coming back to visit. (laughs) I agree. That's what I tell mine all the time. <laughs> so you're only allowed to leave if you come back for visits. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so let's circle back to my question I threw out at the beginning of our podcast. I challenged everybody to sort of think about which one of these questions you think might be the most frequently asked question. Joy, did you have an opinion on that? Was it the one about, you know, Am I going to be able to teach the difficult high school courses? <laughs> yes, it was. Yes. <laughs> and I think that's because it's these are questions from the parent's perspective. And, yes. of course, the parent is like, wait, there's no way I'm going to be able to teach them physics. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's top of mind. And so most frequently asked question, just like you and I have the last 30 minutes, we've talked about how we've had these fears and we've had these concerns, yeah. but... It's a process of steps. You don't do it all at once. No. And you grow with it. Your kids grow with you. You learn and you you begin to see that, oh my goodness, I wouldn't trade homeschooling my teenagers through high school for anything. Thank you for joining us today, Joy. I really enjoyed talking about homeschooling high school. I think everybody can tell I'm kind of passionate about it, but it's something that I feel like all of us as homeschool moms can do if we just put aside some of the worry and the fear that stop us in our tracks. I hope our listeners enjoyed this episode as much as we did, Joy. On behalf of homeschool.com, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. With grace and joy, Jamie.